So now we're going to have a look at how we combine Poisson linearly independent variables. So if we know that two variables can both be modelled using a Poisson distribution and are both independent of each other, which means that one of them does not affect the other, then we can combine those two together. So if we have one variable which can be modelled using a Poisson distribution with parameter lambda, or mean lambda, and we have another variable y, which can also be modelled using a Poisson distribution with a parameter mu, or a mean mu, then we can combine those together as long as they are independent, so that we have the first variable plus the second variable can be modelled using a Poisson distribution, and we add those parameters together. The important thing here that hasn't been written down though is that when we combine our variables, if you remember at the end of the last video, uh, we talked about the fact that we can change the time frame that we're having a look at these variables in. But when we are combining the variables, they need to be over the same length of time. So if when we're given the information, we know that, let's say the parameter X is for every half an hour something happens, and the parameter Y is for every uh, hour something else happens, when we're combining them together, because we want it over a single time frame, for instance, per hour, we would have to make it so that our x variable was over an hour before we combined them together. So we're going to have a look at an example to do with this. So we have a town has two parks, the number of serious accidents in the first park over a year has been found to happen at a constant average rate of four per year. So our first park, we can call that X. So our first park X follows a Poisson distribution with four accidents and this is per year. The number of serious accidents in the second park over a year, so again, this is year, so that's okay, we've got the same time frame, uh, has been found to be distributed at an average rate of three per year. So this variable, we can call that y, again follows a Poisson distribution, but this time with a parameter of three. And again, this is per year. The number of accidents which happens per year in either park are independent of each other. So that's good. We need to know that information so that we can combine these together if we need to. So Steve, a town planner, wonders how is the total number of reported park accidents in the town distributed? And then we're asked to find the distribution of the total number of accidents reported. So the total number of accidents reported are going to be those from the first park added together with those from the second park. And because they're both over the same length of time, we don't need to do any editing here. So we're going to have the X plus Y follows a Poisson distribution. And as I explained before, we're just going to add those two parameters together. So we're going to have four plus three, which gives us a parameter now of seven. In part B, we're asked to find the probability that nine serious park accidents happen per year. So this hasn't specified which park it's uh, contained in. So it is going to be uh, the blue one that I've just added to the end. I'm just adding the time frame there so I remember. So we are going to be having a look using this distribution here. So the probability that we are trying to find, so we want nine serious park accidents. So we want the probability that X plus Y equals nine. So we're going into dist across Poisson, P 
PPD and remember it's in exactly the same part even if you have one of the old calculators the only difference is that instead of lambda it says mu in your calculator but it means the same thing so the x is 9 and our parameter is 7 and that gives us a probability of 0 0.101 to three significant figures then for part C, we're trying to find the probability that less than five serious park accidents happen per year. So again, it doesn't specify which park, so we are looking at the combination. So we're looking at the probability that X plus Y is less than five. And remember that we can only put inclusive inequalities, so less than or equal to's or greater than or equal to's into these new calculators and strictly less than or equal to ones in the old version of the calculator. So we are going to have to change this. If you do struggle with the conversion, if you do yourself a quick number, nine, number line, not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And remember that this is going to go on forever with the Poisson distribution. We want strictly less than five. So strictly less than five is going to be these numbers here. And then we can easily see that this means that we're looking for the probability that X plus Y is less than or equal to four. And you can see that here. So if you have one of these new versions of the calculator, we want to go into dist across Poisson. This time we're going into PCD because it's not an equal to, it's a less than or equal to. Remember that because we're counting the number of events that are happening, the lowest that we can have is zero. The highest that we're wanting here is four and our parameter is seven. And that gives us a probability of 0.173. Just to remind you how you would put that into the old version of the calculator, we would go into dist across Poisson PCD again, but this time the X is signifying the biggest number that we want, so that's four, and mu is going to be our parameter, which is seven. There we go, and again that gives us the exact same probability there. So you have to be careful, remember that in the old version of the calculator you can only do less than or equal to, you can't do greater than or equal to, so you are going to have to change that. So I'd now like you to pause the video and give the now you try question a go. Again, if you look here carefully, we have got the same time frame per day and per day. So we're not having to change anything there before we combine our parameters together. Okay, so hopefully you paused the video and you gave the now you try question a go. As you can see here, I've labelled the first shop as X and the second shop as Y. So we have the sales of a particular make of video recorder at two shops which are members of the same chain follow independent Poisson distribution with a mean of three per day at the first shop and 4.5 per day at the second shop. Find the probability that on a given day, the first shop sells more than five. So we're just looking at our first distribution and we're looking for the probability that X is more than five. So as I explained before, we are going to have to change this in our new calculator to greater than or equal to six. And also remember that when we're doing the Poisson distribution, that it has no upper limit. So in PCD, we're going to have six as our lower value. We're going to have nine, 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 nine as our upper value. And our parameter is just going to be three. And you can see where I've got that probability from there. The next question, we're trying to find the probability that the shop sales are more than five. The second shop sales, sorry, are more than five. So we'd put that in the new version of the calculator in the same way. Just a quick reminder that if you have the old version of the calculator, we are going to have to change this. I'll just show you with this first one. When we're looking at the probability that X is more than five, instead of changing it to greater than or equal to six, instead we would change it to one minus the probability that X is less than or equal to five. And again, you can do a number line to show that. Uh, if you struggle with that conversion. So then in our calculators, we put our X value as five and our parameter as three. And that means that we would end up doing one minus 
0.916082 and it goes on. Remember to give this to more than three significant figures so that when you do your one takeaway, you end up with an answer that you can round to three significant figures, which again, once you do the takeaway, would give you 0.0839. So you end up with the same answer. Moving on to part C. So part C is talking about the total sales. So this is where we're actually doing our combination. So now we have X plus Y is going to follow the Poisson distribution with a parameter of 7.5. So that 7.5 has come from doing 3 plus 4.5, which gives us 7.5. For the first one, we're just looking at 5 or fewer. So we're wanting to include 5. So again, in our new calculator, we would put our lower as being zero, our upper as being five, and our parameter as being 7.5, which as you can see, gives me that answer there. In the old version of the calculator, we would have our X value as five and our parameter as 7.5, and you can see that you end up with the same value. For part II, we're looking at more than 10, so the probability that X plus Y is more than 10, we can't put this into either one of the calculators, so we have to change it to greater than or equal to 11. So this time in the new version of the calculator, the lower value will be 11, the upper will be 9999999, which gives us this probability here. Remember, if you have the older version of the calculator, you're gonna to have to change that to one minus the probability of X being less than or equal to 10, which should still give you the same answer. For the last one here, between five and nine inclusively, which means that we're wanting to include those values. So our lower is going to be five and our upper is going to be nine and we just end up with that probability there. Now, if you have one of the old versions of the calculator, it is a little bit harder than that. If I quickly draw a number line and remember that's gonna go on forever, I'm wanting between five and nine inclusively. So we're gonna end up having to do the biggest one that we want. So the probability of X being less than or equal to nine, take away the biggest one that we don't want. So the probability of X being less than or equal to four. And then you would put nine and four in for your X value and do the takeaway in the normal part of your calculator. So next time we're gonna move on to how we would do hypothesis testing for Poisson distribution. Thank you very much for listening.